All right. Um, happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, it is Senator Natalie Murdoch, honored to serve Senate District 20, been in the Senate for about um, two years, um, but honestly, really excited to talk about today's topic um, here to you, sponsored by Talk It Out and See, um, and they provide resources and information about underage drinking. Um, so long before I was a state senator, I did a lot of work with NCDOT. I was a regional transportation planner out west. And so um, from a crash perspective and a safety perspective, um, have seen firsthand the impacts of underage drinking. Um, and it'll be covered in the presentation in a little bit. It really, really contributes to um, a lot of deaths um, in regards to when you combine that uh, with with driving. Um, and I'm also um, 38 years old, um, so one of the younger senators. So it wasn't that long ago, um, coming up on my 20th anniversary uh, from my high school class reunion. So it wasn't that long ago that I was in high school and, and still have that reference point of, of seeing firsthand um, the impacts of that. So I'm going to um, kick things off with a presentation to talk about the dangers of underage drinking, um, specific issues we're seeing here in North Carolina, um, along with the informational video, then I will open up to some question and answer. All right, so first just to provide um, a general overview. Gonna focus on preventing underage drinking today. Um, so more specifics here in North Carolina, um, underage drinking here um, occurs when someone that is under the legal drinking age um, consumes alcohol in the U.S. That legal age is 21. Uh, in 2018, um, North Carolina reported about 15% of people 20, 12 to 20 have participated in past month underage drinking. Um, a person under the age of 21 that is caught purchasing that can be charged with a class one misdemeanor. So yet another reason to not engage in this because of um, the legal issues that you can get into the sentencing is left up to um, the, judge, the judge's discretion, which is pretty typical with juveniles. I mean, anything that is over 0, 0.00 on an alcohol screening test um, is enough to be convicted um, as a youth. Um, alcohol use by teens is one of the strongest predict pre um, predictors of teen injury, um, fighting academic problem problems, um, unprotected sexual activity, unwanted sexual advances, illegal activity and other illicit drug use and really, really want to highlight that. Um, another role that I was proud to have before becoming a state senator was working with the State Department of Justice. And uh, when you look at um, unwanted sexual advances, when you add alcohol to situations, um, it can make it really difficult to one, engage in sound decisions, and two, can really, really open you up, especially for um, women and people who identify as women to um, be taken advantage of. Um, so that is a huge, huge reason um, that you need to to really prevent underage drinking. Um, teens who use alcohol are at a higher use of um, higher risk of developing mental illness, such as depression um, and suicide. Um, and it can follow you until adulthood when you start those early habits. In 2017, there were 145 deaths that you could attribute to alcohol use. Um, 870, 8,786 years of potential life is lost by young adults in North Carolina as a result of that. And in 2017, um, 20, over 26% of all fatal crashes in North Carolina um, involved um, and that involved an underage driver were due to alcohol impairment. So again, that connection between underage drinking and driving truly, truly is um, fatal and deadly. Uh, we see over a quarter um, of those crashes were due to alcohol impairment. Um, impaired driving remains an issue that affects Americans every day. On average, three to five people will be involved in a crash due to impaired driving. And that's the big statistic, three and five people. That is a lot. In 2016, 10,497 people died in crashes caused by alcohol impaired driving. That accounted for 28% of all traffic related deaths in the US. Um, I um, represent South Durham um, and didn't know until talking with our sheriff when we opened up 885. Uh, we do have an issue with crashes here in Durham, and I'm sure if we were to pull those numbers, a lot of those um, do include those that were alcohol impaired. Um, additionally, drugs other than alcohol were involved in about 16% of motor vehicle crashes. But again, back to that previous statistic, 
over a quarter um, of those uh, crashes for those that are under 18 um, do involve those that are alcohol impaired under 21. Um, work on underage drinking as a community and health um, safety problem is something that we have to do collectively. I'm really glad that Talk It Out and other organizations have started to provide um, a lot more ads on TV. I know I've seen a lot of them um, as an 80s baby, um, came up with the age of dare and um, you know, the, the just say no to drugs campaigns and um, really, really remember, you know, how impactful they were to us just to kind of consistently get that message over time. Um, so we have to do everything we can do to work to educate um, the community at large as far as the dangers of underage drinking and also have to spend time teaching underage individuals um, how to say no to underage drinking, which is what I love about those ads. Um, you shouldn't wait until it's too late. You really should start um, as early as eight, nine, and 10 um, of sharing um, those dangers, um, particularly when young people are going to, to house parties. Um, I don't have the numbers for that, but just anecdotally know a lot of folks um, or young people, their first intro to alcohol is in the home or a, a friend's home. Um, and I was one of those individuals. Um, I've, I've never um, been big on drinking. It's just not my thing. Um, but the first time that I had the opportunity um, to drink was at a friend's home. It was a friend and they knew where um, the parents um, had wine and um, I did not engage, but um, there were some friends that engaged. And then I have um, just another friend um, that luckily, you know, they're living to talk about it, struggle of alcoholism. Um, but said that they had their first beer at 11 years old actually in their home. So um, really, really have to keep an eye out, not just on kind of parties and, and where you think folks will get that alcohol. Um, if it's just kind of open and not stored in your home, um, that is typically the first time that, that young people um, get that exposure if there is alcohol in the home. Um, and also support community events that give children the opportunity to safe and educational experiences. Um, here are um, some references. Um, definitely go to um, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, um, Stop, Hack, Stop Alcohol Abuse, as well as um, Talk It Out and CBPS here in North Carolina. Um, they can provide um, a lot of resources um, for you as well. And going to um, close with a great Talk It Out video um, that you all can view um, on YouTube. Right now, children and teenagers are home more than ever. While this means more family time, they can't participate in sports or club activities, go to school, or spend as much time with their friends. This change in routine can be stressful. Hi, my name is Nicole Augustine. I'm an ambassador for Talk It Out NC, which is a statewide initiative to prevent underage drinking. I'm here to help you spot the warning signs of underage drinking and figure out if your child may be experiencing withdrawal symptoms since they may be cut off from the alcohol source right now. First, let's review the warning signs of underage drinking. Mood changes, like an increase in temper, irritability, and defensiveness. Problems with schoolwork. Their assignments, workload, and the way they attend classes are different right now but a drastic drop in grades or enthusiasm could be a warning sign. Friend changes. Any change in their relationships, such as suddenly dropping one friend or talking to a whole new group of friends that you don't know can be a sign of underage drinking. A nothing matters attitude. This may look like low energy, a sloppy appearance, or lack of enthusiasm for former interests. Physical or mental problems, like memory lapses, slurred speech, or trouble concentrating. It's important to take note of these warning signs while your kids are at home, especially if you have alcohol in the house. Studies suggest there has been an increase in alcohol consumption during the pandemic, and it's important to keep both an eye out on the alcohol in your home and to make sure you demonstrate safe and smart behavior when you drink. Remember, your kids will model their behavior on yours. Alcohol impacts brain chemistry and takes a toll on the body. Whether someone stops drinking suddenly or gradually, the lack of alcohol will have a noticeable impact. Early symptoms of alcohol withdrawal include fatigue, headache, nausea, irritability, and sensitivity to light and sound, otherwise known as a hangover. Other symptoms of alcohol withdrawal include insomnia, mild hallucinations, mood swings, 
restlessness, and extreme sweating. If you notice any of these signs, talk to your kids. You may notice different personality traits in your kids as you spend more time at home with them. This is a great time for family members to connect and spend quality time together. Starting the conversation is the first step to prevent underage drinking. You can find tips on how to talk to your kids about alcohol and underage drinking by visiting talkitoutnc.org. Okay, um, so that was the um, brief presentation. If any of you all um, have questions at this time or want more information and resources, um, let us know. Um, yeah, um, other ways to reach young adults. Um, there was some video that I couldn't find for this presentation that I really wanted to find, but I know I'm not the only one. I've been seeing more commercials online that I think are pretty on target and they literally talk through um, adults talking to their younger children, not waiting to their 13, 14 and 15. And some of these commercials to me, they look as young as eight, nine, 10 years old. Um, and one of them that I really liked, which um, is a very realistic situation was um, a young girl who definitely probably was about 10 or 11 and she was going to a sleepover. And um, the point was for them to go ahead and have that talk with her before she even went to the sleepover to say, hey, don't feel pressured. You know, if you don't want to drink, it's okay. And and really, really talking them them through uh, kind of the steps of, of saying no to that. Um, it really, really does begin in the home. And I think for folks that aren't, you know, in a two parent home, you can be the grandparent and still have this conversation. Um, you can be the mentor, you know, I mentor young people. Um, so even as a mentor, I think you, you just can't be afraid to um, have these, these conversations. So I think um, I've been talking a lot about TV, but um, the best way to get young people now is on TikTok. Um, through my official side as a senator, I now have a TikTok account and I have had young people under 15 reach out to me on TikTok that, you know, just were engaging in content. So social media is a phenomenal way to um, re reach out to, to young people and we have to give them credit. You know, I mean, um, you know, we have young people that are having huge movements as far as um, gun reform and climate change. So the same can happen for, um, you know, alcohol abuse. Um, we have already been successful. Tobacco use before vaping <laughs> took off was way down. Um, I, I was born in 84 and I think we were that generation where we just didn't view it as a, as a cool thing, you know, so tobacco, so tobacco abuse has really, really gone down um, due to a lot of phenomenal campaigns. I think truth.com is, is how they were sponsored. So we can definitely continue to do the same with, with alcohol. Um, yeah, see something for media um, literacy skills. That is definitely a, a big one because, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, I know law enforcement, they've done a lot of these talks and folks can't get access to fake IDs. Um, that was not in the presentation. Um, but again, I, I remember those days pretty, pretty well. And um, you, you really do have to be cognizant of um, letting young people know kind of what can happen um, if they engage in any of that activity as far as um, getting the fake ID, not just to get into a party, but to purchase alcohol, that that's a misdemeanor that can follow them around. Um, again, as a young person, you don't know what's going to happen uh, when you go before that judge. So I think really talking about um, the consequences of it and um, what was shown in the video of um, the impacts, you know, and the effects. I think that um, we don't talk enough about kind of the downsides of drinking of, you know, it, it's not just kind of that temporary feeling. It can really, really lead to long term impacts when you started early on when your brain isn't fully developed. So I think really talking about the long term impacts are are helpful. And um, let's see. Um, great. Yeah, Devon, if there are any other questions. Yes. Um, so as far as legislators working in the community, the timing for that is pretty perfect. I will be honest. I'm thankful to talk it out and see as legislators. I don't think that we um, have done a lot of kind of hands on work with alcohol, quite frankly, because opioid addiction is 
huge with young people. Um, to give you an extreme example, I have seen stories as dramatic as um, teenagers that are hiding the opioids behind light fixtures in homes. And so I think we kind of pivoted to opioids so heavily because the need was there, um, but we cannot keep our eye off of underage drinking. So thank you for that, um, Ms. Maddox. So we, we really need to do a better job um, as legislators of, of talking about that. Um, as full disclosure, I work on a lot of legislation around the legal um, use of alcohol, but we can't take our eye off the ball. We do have great resources like Talk It Out and See um, and need to make sure that we um, make those available to our constituents. I have a weekly newsletter. My assistant, um, Devon Irv Dowd, is on board online, and I'll make sure that we have a clip of this um, in our newsletter this week. But excellent point. We We really need to um, do more to make sure the funding is there um, to support everything that DPS and our local ABC boards are doing to get the word out about um, making sure alcohol use is, is safe. And yes, um, Devon is, is so right there um, that works in my office of making sure your um, children feel comfortable even having those conversations. Um, I was blessed where I did. You know, I had parents that had Kind of that open door um, policy and hats off to them. I think that's why I never really indulged in much of anything that much. I was a pretty boring child, um, but it was because, you know, I had an open conversation, open door policy with my parents where we could talk about anything. Um, you know, open door gave me, um, you know, a decent amount of freedom. But um, if I ever had questions about anything I knew, you know, without judgment, I could, you know, go to my parents and have those conversations, but for folks that don't through mentorship, through community organizations, um, through nonprofits, I think kind of however you can reach young people, giving them that solid advice. I was big into Girl Scouting. I do remember we, we did some workshops on all of it, um, drugs in general, in addition to underage drinking, because again, for young girls and women, you have got to be careful with what situations you put yourself in uh, when you are um, under the influence. It just really can impair your judgment. And so you do not want to, um, you know, just, just be careful, you know, about the situations that you're in when, when alcohol is involved. Um, and if we have any other questions. And also something that I'm going to look into, um, I don't know if it's still around, you know, but D.A.R.E. was huge when, when I was coming up. So now I am curious to see, particularly in middle and high school, you know, what do you get directly through the schools? I'm actually not sure, you know, so this has piqued my interest. I'm going to do a little dig in and see what information our students getting directly um, in the schools about around underage drinking. Hi, Senator Murdoch. I just wanted to um, chime in. This is Devine, Senator Murdoch's assistant, and uh, I'm uh, just a few years uh, younger than Senator Murdoch. And I just wanted to mention, <laughs> I was actually um, like uh, I was a student at um, Smithfield, which is in Johnson County. And incidentally, Johnson County, um, the teenagers uh, there have somewhat of a big like it, it's one of the biggest issues with um like young driving deaths um and especially uh regarding um like alcohol and drug use and so a big thing was like th like this is definitely something that is being talked about at the school level because i'm pretty sure like every year in health class or something like it was it was discussed because uh you know it was it was a big issue in um johnson county and luckily our school didn't see a lot of that but it was you know surrounding schools did so it's definitely something that gets brought up um at like the um middle and high school level but um you know i'm not sure how other counties do it but i know since it's an issue specifically with johnson county that it was a big discussion point mm -hmm. yeah excellent point um because I did grow up in a in a more urban area, but particularly in our rural communities, um, you you know kind of have easier access to cars, and you know back to it may not be through official means. You know it may be a neighbor, it may be a party. So you know no matter 
um, what sort of area you you live in, um, the issue remains. And um, I think same for me, Devon. I think back then it was it wasn't just PE class. It's also how you get um, like your um, you know awareness of health and diet and nutrition, but also drugs um, and sex ed. All of that was included um, with our PE when we weren't in the gym. We were getting that education. So yes. Um, Hopefully, you know, that curriculum is still there so that you can get it directly um, to students, which, you know, back to why we got to fully fund our public schools um, so that they can get um, all of this timely, valuable information. So, any more questions before we close? Oh, yes, underage drinking month. I think that is a great idea. Okay. Let's see, an underage drinking month. Prepare a child to deal with the possibility. Yes, heading into college is a big one. Um, I mean, that transition, again, because it was not that long ago for me, um, going from, from high school to college is a, a huge one. Um, I had, and she, she ended up being okay, but there was a family member I was really, really concerned about. She was really sheltered and went away to school, like multiple states away. And was just horrified because I felt she was, um, you know, in a, in a phenomenal environment in her home, but was just concerned about, you know, her, her leaving <laughs> so far away from, from home. I didn't have a family member that went that far away from school. You know, here in North Carolina, we have phenomenal, you know, public and private schools. So a lot of folks just stay here um, and she was okay. But yeah, I mean, going from, you know, under the roof of, you know, parents or, or maybe a relative to completely being on your own. I think not only having those conversations, I think keeping up with that student, you know, once they become a college age student, either physically going to them, you know, if you have the means to go to their campus or as was in the video, if they just seem a little different when they come back home for spring break or if they don't want to come home, that's definitely a red flag um, that they may be hiding something. But I think um, you have a right, you know, they're still your child. If you want to pop up on campus and, and see what's going on. Um, my parents regularly about once a quarter, you know, we would do lunch or dinner or something. They would um, come and meet me. I went to, to UNC Chapel Hill for, for undergrad, but huge fraternity and sorority culture, you know, those, um, you know, parties and the Greek houses, you know, being able to hang out on Franklin Street. And so every university kind of, can have that that vibe and flavor. Born and raised in Greensboro, which was a college town, um, which is a good thing because I think sometimes, particularly local establishments, um, the the bars and the the retailers, they know to look out for that. And did skip over that here in North Carolina. I'm pretty sure that we have a lot of areas that they will ask for your ID no matter how old you are. I think the standard is a minimum of about ten years. Um, but they will not assume, you know, that someone is that age, they will, you know, ask for that ID. But I think definitely having that conversation um, before they, they go off and, and back to the great videos that I've, I've been seeing um, just on local and cable TV, starting as early as 9, 10 and 11, you know, so that you have a handle on it before they go after or go off to college. But definitely need to to have those conversations with them before they go to college. And also with technology, it's not just a phone call. You can FaceTime, you can Zoom, you can, you know, Meta Portal, you know, however you choose to to keep up with that student. You can physically see them and um, see if they're okay. And also, who are they being influenced by? I think parents or caretakers they know their child more than anyone. Um, my parents knew for me that I would be fine. I've never been a follower. I've always been more of a leader and I'm an only child. So I've, I've never been that person that like had to fit in, but I definitely had a, a number of friends that, you know, would do things just because they wanted to fit in or they were looking for that acceptance. So I think if you know that, you know, your child or friend or person you're mentoring is a little bit more susceptible to that peer pressure, then having that that conversation with them um, and really, really just keeping up and, and seeing what's going on. Don't let them just go off to college and kind of um, do do their own. And yes, um, you're so right, Brian. I'm getting involved in activities that do not involve um, alcohol. 
That is so true. <laughs> idle minds and idle hands will get in trouble, you know, and um, particularly if you have difficult majors, you know, I mean, if you are, you know, pre-med or trying to go to business school, you shouldn't have time, you know, so I think also stress that time is much better spent studying or being a part of extracurricular activities that are going to help them to get great internships and to build their networks um, post-graduation. Um, Yes, yes, I, that is a great point too um, from Divine of letting, making folks aware of what resources are available on campus. They have a lot of buttons on campus that you can push in the event that something has happened to you um, or if you do reach out to, um, you know, the kind of campus security, they do really enforce safety over punishment. So that is a great, great event. And yes, um, thank you so much, Mr. M Mr. Baddix. Um, Dr. Boone, I did see that she's done a talk it out and see. So definitely a big shout out to Dr. Boone. She does a lot of work on um, on Durham Try. And actually, I will give um, to to really show how Dr. Boone stays on top of this sort of thing. A lot of folks, understandably so, were concerned at the height of the pandemic. We were getting a lot of pressure from our um, local establishments. Um, bars and, and restaurants, a lot of the money they make were off of alcohol sales. So when we um, were able to have um, temporary, a temporary uh, policy so that you could have drinks to go, rightfully so, some groups said, well, wait a minute, you know, what about young people? What about underage um, driving and, and driving folk for containers? Um, so those points were well taken. We ended up doing that because other states did find ways to do it safely since you're still carded in the car and everything, but to her credit, um, one of the first letters we got was from Dr. Boone to say, make sure that you roll this policy out um, to ensure that young people will not take advantage of this, this loophole, you know, to get a hold of alcohol. So yes, Dr. Boone is, is someone that has um, phenomenal programs around um, that topic. Yes, and alcohol-free fraternities. That is another good point too, definitely. And, and I think, um, you know, when I was on campus at UNC Chapel Hill, there was a big push for that. There was a big push for making sure you're safe, you know, making sure that you, uh, what's really heartbreaking on campus is when you can see, um, you know, young people who just really are are gone, you know, and helping them to get to safety uh, when you know that they are, are so drunk um, that they, they don't even know where they are and can't take care of themselves. So, there were definitely workshops that we will have on campus so that, you know, we can, we can um, be a lookout for that. And I think also when you give advice to young people, making sure that they have the right friends. Um, I was with a group of friends where we always looked out for each other. So you shouldn't go out on your own, use the buddy system. You need to impress upon them. Never leave your friends. Do not go out alone. And quite frankly, someone should pledge to not drinking anything to make sure that you all get home safely because it things can happen that 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 quickly, um, not only through cars, but even through being a pedestrian. You know, you could be walking around um, and have trouble, you know, getting back to your dorm or, or back to your apartment. Um, so I think for a number of reasons, really, really utilize that buddy system so that um, if they are out, you know, having a good time um, that that someone is is. All of you, you know, make sure everyone gets home safely and that you're keeping an eye out on each other for the whole evening. In addition to letting folks know you got home safely, that's another good trick too. And that's a, again, with technology, you can say, you know, to your child, okay, I know you're going out to, you know, such and such party, but when you get home, you text me, let me know that you got home safely. Yeah, great, great questions, but I love this idea of really doing an educational uh, month, you know, having a whole month to prevent underage drinking. So I, I think that is a great idea and I will, I will start working on that to see when we can do that next, next year. Um, and also, um, Heather uh, can hold me to this. We can talk of Governor Cooper and, and have a proclamation and everything and, and really double down on that for an entire month because over 25% is pretty high. I think that is pretty concerning. I was not aware of that statistic and still getting ready for this presentation, but to know that 25% 
of um, accidents and fatalities for people under 21 involves underage drinking. There are a lot of lives that we can we can save um, if if we really continue to do marketing on that. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you all um, enjoyed the presentation. We'll open up for any other um, questions. And yes, yes. And um, we will close with the ownership is is on the adults as well. Devon, I think that's a great idea. Um, the the culture that you raise young people in back to, I cannot stress enough. Um, I know people who unfortunately have struggled with um, alcoholism and, and and drug abuse for years um, that said the first exposure was in the home. And, um, you know, I, I know kind of the joke for a lot of parents is, you know, oh, that's daddy's juice or that's mommy's juice to keep them away from the beer and wine um, and, the, and the liquor, um, but they can explore, you know, so something as, ba as basic as having um, things that are, that are locked, um, but those are, um, you know, activities that they can pick up, you know, it, it can be learned behavior. So Devon, I think that's a great way to close where we all have a responsibility to say, uh, you know, we're, we're in it too, you know, as adults, uh, you can legally um, drink and drink responsibly, but you do have to be cognizant of what sort, sort of image are you providing to your children? And yes, location monitoring apps, huge, 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 huge. Um, and there's actually, um, just a quick plug, it's, it's not directly on this topic, but um, there is an app um, that Representative Zach Hawkins' wife has worked on. They're very public about two of their children are on the spectrum, and so they have apps um, to trap their children because um, you don't definitely don't do not want something to happen, you know, with your child if you know that you really, really got to keep an extra eye on them. Um, but yes, location monitoring is is huge. And um, yes, Mike, do you have a question? Hey, good morning, Senator Murdoch. I just Hi. wanted to say hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I am the uh, soon to be deputy commissioner. Okay. Uh, ABC commission. Thank you. Um, Terrence Merriweather has been doing a great job. He's had a long career and he's winding it down at the end of this month. Okay. So he's been helping me as has Berna and her staff learn about all the great things the commission does. And, and I think this is um certainly one of the most important if not the most important i've told Berna, i can't wait to continue to be part of this whole program of public awareness education so i just wanted to say hi i know i'm meeting you virtually but look forward to meeting you in person um next time the chairman and or i or, or when you guys are in session and yeah. come by and say hello and really appreciate your leadership in this area um you're making me smile. I have my wife and I have two kids. Our oldest is 25 year old daughter. We still make her text us when she gets home um, at night from certain things. And, and I think she kind of likes it to be honest with me. She lives in her own little townhouse, but we still say, you know, how about giving us a text? So I guess that's just being a parent. And then I would just add, um, I'm a fellow Tar Heel. So it's great okay. to see a fellow Tar Heel <laughs> doing so well and all the good things you're doing. You. Now, I was there when there was a young man named Michael Jordan. Yes. Who led us to a championship. That That's my era. <laughs> yeah. So we studied by candlelight, but we did. We still made it through. Yeah. Um, so, hey, keep doing the good work. Let us know what we can do to support you and help and look forward to meeting you. Thank you for today, your time today. Yes. Thank you so much, Mike. And you will continue to do that. I am 38 years old and I still text my mom when I get home. <laughs> and if she That's good. Goes, Two days. She appreciates it. I can tell you. She will freak out. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you you have to. You you have to nowadays. You just cannot assume that they're okay. You know, the same when I was in college, because um, back then we still had um, instant messenger aim. So definitely through the computer, there's just so much more you can do. And the same for those apps on that phone. That is just a huge, huge tip. Um, to have tracking because heaven forbid something bad has happened and you just don't know. So just that overall safety and awareness of where you are um, ties into everything around um, under underage drinking, you know, because it, you have to be hands on with with parenting. You know, we, we thrive under that. Absolutely. Thing. And this whole program, the, the, the greater program of the education and everything that goes with it just goes to the core of part of our tenants of the commission's public health and public safety. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, Bern and her team 
Um, it's done a great job of, of helping me in the short time I've been here, and I'm excited to be part of this going forward. So, okay. thank you. Yeah, great thanks so much. I can look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, and I have learned so much and you've left me, uh, you know, really, really inspired and, and the time and is, is pretty perfect because in the early stages of planning um, a month for Girl Scouts. So I think this ties right in. Um, and yes, thank you so much, Brian, for um, additional resources for, for athletes, because um, that's another group where you can just like kind of go along with the culture. Um, we talked a lot about fraternities and sororities, but definitely athlete culture. That that's another one where um, you really, really need to watch out. So that resource was provided. Um, and if Heather has time, she can drop the link for um, talkitoutnc.org. Um, I was just on there today. They have great visuals. They have scripts as far as how to have these conversations um, with young people. And so um, continue to support the work of, of Talk It Out and um, look forward to working on um, Underage Drinking Prevention Month with all of you. All right, I think we'll wrap up and you all enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>